is by uh, the artist, uh, Susumu Matsuura, and he'll be talking, uh, firstly he'll give a, a presentation about his work, and then he'll be in conversation with Dr. Lee Campbell. Um, so I'll just very briefly introduce them both. Um, as you can see downstairs, Susumu Matsuura specializes in silk screen print making, um, and his work is essentially portraits, and it says here they're portraits with a somewhat cynical touch, so I'm sure he'll be talking about that. Um, he has a Bachelor in Fine Arts from Doto University in Hokkaido, and he continues to be based in uh, Sapporo in Hokkaido. And he's won several awards, um, in particular the Showa Foundation Award for Art Studies Abroad, gave him the opportunity to uh, work and travel in Europe uh, for a year. Um, he's done quite a number of solo exhibitions and group exhibitions in various places. I'm not going to list them all, but uh, you know, Switzerland, Czech Republic, and of course lots of uh, exhibitions in Japan. And then uh, with him, Dr. Lee Campbell um, is also an artist and curator and lecturer. And he lectures across, as far as I can make out, nearly all of the constituent colleges of the University of the Arts, London. So that's um, Central St. Martins, Camberwell, Chelsea, Wimbledon, Colleges of Art. Um, and his speciality is um, art using the body, as I understand it. Um, and he's published uh, a lot of research internationally um, you know, about, about art, particularly in that specialist area. So first of all, we're going to hear a presentation from Matsuura. Okay. Hello everyone, uh, thank you all for coming today. Uh, I'm Sumu Matsura from Japan. Nice to meet you. Uh, sorry, I need uh, this paper and I need a drink. <laughs> uh, I will talk about my artwork and myself. I majored in printing, uh, mainly silk screen uh, pr printing, and dying at university. Uh, normally, I uh, exhibit in, in Sapporo and other city of in Japan, uh, but now I getting opportunity uh, uh, exhibit in. Abroad. Uh, we need the Shuo, Fund, Shuo Foundation. Mm, which, uh, yes. uh, Shuo Foundation Award for Art Studies Abroad uh, give, gave me the opportunity to work on display in Europe uh, from 2016 to 2017. Uh, first, mm, first theme of portraits. Uh, I started working on portraits from around 2011. Uh, it started as my way of uh, expressing uh, sarcasm towards university courses. Uh, that that told the mainstream realize realize realize. Uh, painting, uh, which was heavily influenced by Western art. The art taught at Japanese institutes uh, felt as if they are producing uh, craftsmen, uh, as more emphasis was put on the technical side uh, rather than expressing one's feelings. I found that boring and proceeded to draw a portrait in my own way. I believe that uh, this is why my portraits um, possess some Western characteristics. Even so, I'm Japanese. When working, I develop <coughs> a figure based on an image that arose from a word and or a feeling. 
this is the uh, same thing uh, that I come across in everyday situation. Uh, my models are often not a specific person, but rather an image of um, each person. And yet there are some occasions where I kind of end, end up projecting myself into the artwork. This is thanks to my old habit as a child. I used to observe others around me from very young age. And uh, next thing, uh, as I draw uh, various kinds of people, uh, I was in, intri intrigued by why such feelings are felt and was drawn into psychological side of things, such as the Lord Shaha test uh, that led me to symmetrical work like this, symmetric. With uh, emphasis, emphasis on multidimensional and bidimensional personalities, I also started teaching at teaching art at high school. Around this time, uh, that school uh, specialized in children with uh, minor or some learning disabilities. I faced a lot of children uh, who were uh, suffering from depression, uh, children with communication difficulties, and children with special family uh, circumstances. This experience uh, stimulated my mind greatly, and I tried my best to help. But I was not equipped with enough knowledge nor experience, and it resulted in me suffering from depression as I struggled to maintain a balance between my own productive work and teaching work and private life. This is about theme uh, melancholy. Uh, the first thing I realized is that I have stopped uh, listening to music. And I used to listen every morning, but that habit was I lost at some point. Then I could not sleep, no, <coughs> no matter how tired I was. I felt as if I was losing myself and every day turned in, into a struggle. And yet, uh, there were times that I had to think about the concept of my artwork and produce them like a machine, machine as I had that rhyme. My condition was relatively right and I had support from friends. So I took about three months uh, off, off work and gradually recovered to the uh, point where I could look at the person uh, I was talking to. But even to this day, this day, I could occasionally hint the depression uh, deep inside of me. I tried to overcome depression by forcing myself to convert this experience into artwork, such as uh, the day uh, I stopped listening to music and that day I realized I wasn't myself. 
in order to remember those feelings that I went through. The theme of this work uh, so, uh, this is uh, this is this title is sorry um, <coughs> I this theme is um, I. If if everyone is ill, uh, it's uh, good for me uh, because first first time uh, I felt um, I'm ill, but um, getting changed mind. Uh, everyone is ill. I'm I'm normal change my uh, but more change uh, now I'm understand uh, that times uh, me is so was so crazy mind yeah. uh, and next thing uh, hu about human behavior uh, this artwork is exhibited in sports station. Uh, uh, the theme of this work is about human ecology. Uh, I was drawn to the thought of human existence while thinking about human feelings and desires. Uh, if you look around yourself, everything, everything you see exists uh, because of human and even plants and consciously placed by human. I recreated the feeling of propagation of things by human using the method of reprinting the patterns of a print. I'm not focusing on uh, on the issue of coexistence of city and nature, but human production process to maintain human life forms. This always reminds me of a uh, coral leaf. Coral leaf. leaf. Uh, that we humans are just like them. This work was displayed. In Sapporo. This is uh, Sapporo Station. <coughs> and this is uh, advertising of my uh, exhibition movie display. And uh, regarding the development of my artwork, I displayed a <coughs> city. Uh, always growing in an exhibition in Shibuya, Tokyo. That time I added many human figures that repre represented works. Uh, some parts uh, of the same artwork, uh, but I add uh, like this. Uh, some people and yes, some parts. Uh, this is a portrait of the works I uh, workers I imagine. Uh, this same same character. Uh, now I can also feel the irony of these images. Since I used to be like them before creating this art piece, I used to work north 
stop to create artworks. And I, at the same time, I make uh, so many portraits and other theme of um, artwork. Portraits, 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 portraits. I made uh, many artwork. I started. Uh, I visit many beautiful places uh, while I traveled in many countries, and I took pictures uh, focusing on people gathering around buildings uh, rather than the buildings uh, themselves. This is because of serving people gathering around things. Uh, built by people made me feel <coughs> that humans are like the flow of the of one crowd. It could be something like an ant parade. Uh, this um, Vienna, uh, tai Taipei, um, Basel. Sapporo, uh, yeah. 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 Florence. Yes. Florence. Yes. Florence. Yes. Florence. 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 Sometimes I suddenly start looking at things uh, from a objective point of view and occasionally uh, lose the perception of size. Uh, for example, uh, I thinking about um, something uh, suddenly front of me things uh, getting big or getting close coming coming big uh, and sometimes um, I feel my finger is very far uh, and very small some, sometimes uh, I can see, um, I don't know, uh, <laughs> I don't know why, uh, but sometimes happen. Uh, this is uh, my exhibition in uh, Okayama in Japan, now opening, uh, Okayama Museum. <coughs> okay, uh, next. Uh, this is caress a cat. This is uh, not silk screen print, and uh, just drawing. Uh, since I started ma making art, the main theme has always been humans, uh, seen from different points of views and in various ways. But it was awfully breaking my body and my when I was creating artworks in Europe, I was inspired powerfully by the difference with Japan. There were so many things to observe and learn. So I asked myself, uh, what is art? And another question, uh, what is a flat artwork? Uh, in the eyes of the artist who created it. I was staying in dormitory in Germany 
for one month when I was thinking these things and I kept on making art. Even so, it was really stimulating time. I was in a single room, so um, small, maybe half of this room. More small. Four with four person. I I'm typical Japanese, so my work space was only one small desk. Uh, since I didn't want to disturb my roommates too much, but when I was alone in the room, I made some drawing like this uh, that I drew. Um, cons consciously, uh, this is Karesha Chai. Uh, it was when I was drawing this cat that I realized what's the important meaning of drawing. Drawing is uh, not about drawing a cat, not about drawing a person uh, who is stroking person who is stroking a cat, uh, but to draw the atmosphere of a cat being stroked, this is a kind of art I was creating at that time. I always have an important thing uh, when I create, it is two-sided. Because when I created Caris a cat, I needed I needed to focus on trying to heal me, but at the same time focus on stress and loneliness. I I think that human emotions are the same. I think that feelings and desires are not only very beautiful but also very scary. I'm neither a psychologist nor a philosopher. I think that I will keep on doing different things. And while traveling and meeting people from all over the world, I would like to do art every time I get inspired. Uh, this is um, my new artwork, uh, which was displayed in the exhibition uh, Formlessness uh, in Sapporo in last month. Uh, the title of this artwork <coughs> is uh, We Cherish the Things Which We Cannot See, uh, Foster Them Be Afraid of them, uh, destroy of them, and love them. I created this artwork when there was a blackout. Uh, the water supply and transportation stopped uh, during the Hokkaido uh, earthquake uh, last year. Uh, now I'm working on expressing the things that are connected to humans through human feelings. Uh, these are about my artwork. Okay. Uh, next year, uh, I'm going to stay in the Swatch Art Peace Hotel in Shanghai. Uh, as an artist in residence, I'm looking forward to finding new things uh, because I have never stayed overseas except for Europe until now. Uh, I'm so looking forward to it.
Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your talk. Um, I found it incredibly moving and I think that there's a real honesty uh, when you talk about your work. Um, there's a real frankness when you speak about how your life experiences inform your art practice. So my comments are going to be um, some observations that I've made when listening to your work and also experiencing the work in the flesh. Admittedly, I hadn't seen your work before, and I'm very pleased that I've seen it now in the flesh because I think the range of work um, in terms of form, in terms of um, the different scale, is um, something I'd really like to pick up on. So there's three different um, thematics within your work that really intrigue me, and these are portraiture, psychogeography and this idea around catharsis, or using art as a form to heal you. You seem to um, use, or your life experiences seem to fold into um, how you create your practice. You mentioned to try to overcome depression by forcing myself to convert this experience into art. And artists have um, used um, their own emotions, they've used their feelings, um, sometimes uncomfortable feelings. You mentioned loneliness, you mentioned depression, thank you for your honesty and frankness about that. And they've used those to inform, um, to inform their practice, but also to use their practice in order to, um, as, a, as a cathartic activity, to help to um, to help with their own well-being, to as a form of almost self in, self improvement. And I was just thinking about the way in which some of um, some of your work speaks about that, particularly that piece that you mentioned towards the end, caress the cat. And what I find so interesting about that is where you also talk about this idea of the two-sided or the multi and bi-dimensional personalities. Um, on a completely different tangent, but actually strangely related, I've been looking at various forms of ventriloquism recently in art practice, and how ventriloquists, um, you know, typically ventriloquism is a form of popular comedy entertainment, but how this object, um, the performer or the ventriloquist, uses this object to speak through. And very much, in a way, that that kind of bears a little re resonance to what you're talking about, with that, particularly with that painting or that drawing. Because as much as you're caressing the cat, the cat is almost a symbol for you to try to... Your, the caressing becomes the activity to not only caress the cat, but also to heal you. So there's something really interesting, I think, about, about that dynamic. And I'd like to know a little bit more um, when I ask questions about this idea of the two-sided and how within those images that you're creating you talk about, because um, the first thing I noticed was who, who are these people? Um, you talk about an ish person and I've not heard that term before so I'd very much like to hear more about what, what an ish person is. There are many different contexts within your work in terms of place. Um, and I was thinking about how um, you know, moving on from Guy Debord's understanding of psych or conception of psychogeography in 1955 as how um, urban environments um, impact upon our own effective registers or psychology. And that seems to be, I suppose, the, uh, that seems to be something that's really uh, predominant in your work, that location or site or particularly within an urban context um, certainly that series that you showed at the end, how that might impact upon um, how, how humans uh, or how people 
um, navigate within a space, but how that kind of space affects our own feelings, our own psychology. I'd also like to think about this idea around, just on a, a formal um, description of the work, in terms of colour, in terms of size. Um, you have the work on the wall, and you also have the work on the floor. And for me, they almost those pieces of work that's on the floor, they're almost invitations for me to want to pick them up. Particularly the work, I think it has glitter on it. There seems to be something very textural about them, um, something very tactile. And I'd like you to have picked them up. I'd like to have, I'd like to have physically felt them, um, but I was denied in doing that. I don't know, maybe there's something in that relationship between the flat surface and something to do with tactility, which then folds back into um, how you talk about um, healing within Caressa Can. Maybe there's a tactility that could come back into the work. So I was thinking about some different ways of presenting yourself within the work. You talk again about these multi or bi-personalities. And I think that um, the way in which you use the double or the copy, that kind of mirroring effect, I think is very, very effective. What happens when we see a mirrored image of ourselves? And one of the, um, one of the most striking aspects for me around those portraits are the eyes. Eyes as, um, or the eye as being the window to the soul. But the eye is blank. And I'd like to know more about how you could maybe construct some of those figurative elements within, within the work. I'd also like to know where you might take the work in the future. It's very interesting that you talk about this idea of the work as being, as being cathartic and being related to that to, as, a, as an improvement of your own well-being. How maybe then do you fold back into the idea of how place or how sight then also helps within that process of, of, of being cathartic? So I have three questions now. Um, in what ways um, do you, or please can you tell me more about this idea of the ish person or the multi or bi personality within your work? So shall I uh, shall I give the questions right. first and then, or should we have a question yeah. and then? All right, well, let's, let's, do one let's do one at a time. Let's do one at a time. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> まあ、じゃあその長い話を通訳するんじゃなくて、あの、今なんかミスの質問をしたいという話だったんですけど、なんとかな、え、人間とかな、人とか、あの、あったんですよね。え、これについてもう少し、たいんですけれども、え、その何
入ってきてそれで最終的に何々な人というか,かできた時にイメージができた時に自分の中であこの人はこういう人なんだろうなっていうイメージが最後に出来上がる。So often these、uh, portraits are inspired by a particular words or something that the person said, and that's what he starts with. But as he、uh, paints or produces the, the picture, he will think, oh, well, actually that person is a bit similar to, to this as well. And you know, maybe there's some similarity with that person as well. So it becomes more like a kind of composite image. And then、uh, it becomes a more general, this type of person rather than the individual that he started.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He has, those,、um, he has those portraits where there's a mirror or there's a, there's a doubling.、Um, I was thinking about the sociologist Irving Goffman, who wrote、uh, a book in 50, 1959 called The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life.、Um, his sociological standpoint to how we deem certain types of spaces and certain types of acts, and he uses the metaphor of the theatre, which has a relationship, I think, to this work, as being. Um, or act as being on stage and backstage. And he suggests our backstage selves as understood as the selves that we really are when nobody else is looking. So there seems to, if we, if we start to think about that sort of,、um, if we think about those, that duality of self, I was just kind of thinking about here's, here's the artist and then there's here's the work. And then what happens、um, to the artist? How does his personality or his self get projected through that work? And when I see,、um, when I see、um, th- these people who they're not, it's not self portraits, they're other people,、um, that's, where it, that's where it becomes really, really interesting, particularly because you seem, you seem to really like repetition and the copy. And When, they, when, when the repet- the, the, you have the, the, the double, but then the repetition, for example, there's one, particular,、um, there's one particular work on the floor where I think it's like four or five different faces that meld and blur abstract into this、um, almost like a triangulation of eyes. It's, it's, it's quite unnerving, it's quite abject. But I was, I was just really interested、um, to find out a little bit more about maybe this use of copy, maybe this use of repetition.、Um, how far would you go with that? How far would you push that within your work?
ていうのと、まあ、ちょっとその顔の話であったところでいうと、うん、テーマとしてその二面性とかっていうのを結構あのテーマとして使うことがあるので、まあ、制作の,そのコンセプトとしてもそうですし普段からできるだけこう2つのものをあの同時に見えたりするようなあの気持ちでいろんなものを見ているので。Okay, so、um, well, first of all, as regards to the portraits that he does for him, it's almost like painting a picture or producing a picture is a, producing a picture of a person, and he thinks he's going to continue very much focusing on that kind of picture in the future.、Um, and that's inspired by、uh, looking at how people behave and talking to different people、mm-hmm. and being fascinated at how different they are from himself. Both, both fascinated but also slightly frightened sometimes、mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's been even more the case when he's been overseas outside Japan.、Um, and then another aspect of it is the, the sort of、um, dual nature of,、mm-hmm. of people. So he,、mm-hmm. he likes to have to show you know, the same person twice or、mm-hmm. in, in two different aspects.、Um, and he thinks it's, it's interesting you know, to show two things at the same time.、Um, so he thinks that's a problem with you. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it does. I, I, I also just wanted to. I,、um, I, was also, I was also thinking about the different ways in which、um, the different m e d not just the mediums you work in, but the media in terms of、um, there's in, the installation piece,、um, there's the works that are on the floor, there's the works that are on the wall.、Um, that installation that you have with all of those different Repeated faces it,、uh, uh, interspersed between those,、uh, that urban environment <laughs> strangely reminded me of Fritz Lang's Metropolis,、um, the start of that trailer, because that's almost like an, a, a kind of an apocalyptic vision of,、um, of urbanity, of, living, of moving through, and how people might move through this、uh, urban existence. I just want to go back to that point, this is my final question, about that point that I made earlier. About using art or using objects. It's, with you, it's, it's not just using art to speak through, but actually, you're using other. There is a, there's now is a clearer for me a relationship to this, ventri- to this ventriloquism because you're using other people to speak through some of the issues that you're going through. You, you ident- even though they're not self portraits, you still identify with them. And maybe it's some of those. You were saying about the differences in people, but maybe there's also something about that you find within them、um, characteristics or traits of your own that you, when you see them, they, they, you know, they, they, they're bringing certain maybe things that, are, that you feel in comfort with or in discomfort with.、Um, okay, so I, so I just try to do with that. Yeah, okay, yeah, no, yeah. No, I, well, then I'll bring my final yeah, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. そしてあのもう一つ興味がありますのは、えーそのまあ、アーティストはその作品を通じて何か発表するとかあの気分を、ね、発揮するとということですけれども、えー、この場合は、まあ、あの自分ではなくて他の人の,、えー、その肖像画を使っているようですけれども、えーまあ、他の人は、ね、自分の性格があってそれが面白いというようなお話だったけれどももしかしたらその他の人の中にあの自分の類似点も一部入ってるんじゃないかなというふうに考えていると、えっと、まずインスタレーションの作品についてはなんか人のが動いているっていうのは、えっと、さっきの写真、えっと
ちの方はどっちかっていうと、うん、あのその人のが動いているものを見てあのイメージしたような作品なんですけどこっちのこっちのインスタレーションの方の作品は、うん、となん,なんていうんですかね、まあ、これも、まあ、似てる部分としてはなんか人間を人間として見ないように。感じたというか、うん、なんか多分、うん、と別にアーティストじゃなくてもなんか普通に生きているだけでも何、うん、でしょうねよくなんかあんまりいい表現じゃないかもしれないですけどまあなんか排泄物ってもうなんか生きてれば生まれてくるというか<笑>なんかなん,なんていうんですかねなんか人がいっぱい生きてればそこになんか物が生まれていく。したり、うんと物がそこに出来上がってって、なんかこのままどんどん人があの増殖して、なんかでもそれってすごく僕は素晴らしいことなのかなっても思うんだけれども、なんかちょっと怖いことでもあって、でも別にじゃあ僕はそれについて何かをするってわけじゃないですけれども、うん、なんなんかそれを一個形にしたいな。って思ったのがこの作品。じゃあ前のスライドちょっと見ます。So these ones are, you know, kind of along the lines we were talking about about people moving in、um, spaces.、Um, but the other installation that we show later、um, comes from a slightly different angle, where it's it's almost about regarding people not as people. Mm. Um, you know, like a swarm of, 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 but he didn't use the word ants in this case,、mm. but it was in his、uh, mm. talk earlier, I think.、Um, so,、uh, and it, it's something about the way that people、um, propagate or, or build out the city, you know,、mm. that, that if they cause things to increase in the city, there's something slightly you know, frightening about that, about that in a way. So, he's trying to get across that kind of image in this work. There seems to me,、um, just, just by speaking,、um, something to do with scale and to do with maybe the word intimacy. Because that work, some of those works, because of the size of them, particularly those smaller works,、um, that one that's, the, that's in the black frame, there's something very intimate about that size.、Um, and then I was also just going back to this, maybe I, I kind of want the scale to be. More excessive. I want it to be more, you know, more、um, you know, as, as un, uh, unintimate, but, but having a kind of,、um, yeah, having more of an excessive presence to underline or to,、um, because I think you could really play with that kind of, there's something really interesting in that shift in terms of, of scale and size, because there's an, there's an intimacy, there's a preciousness. There's a tenderness about the small scale of some of those works. And then I saw, and then, so I was going through the PowerPoint that you, you sent me before, and I thought, and until I got to this, I thought, oh, I think I, I, think I know where this work is going in terms of its scale. And then I came across this, and I thought, okay, I kind of, because when you use swarm, you use ants, and that kind of real feeling of maybe urban isolation or you know, some of the issues that you're talking about. I kind of want it to be, it, it, at the moment, because a little too polite, could be far more, far more excessive. So maybe that's just, maybe those binaries need to be more explicit.、Um, yeah, so I just deal with that. But, yeah. 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 Yeah.
っていう町をテーマにいつかあの,あのその青いやつは札幌にある建物を最初に作ったんですよね、うん、でこのグレーの建物はその東京で展示するときに東京にある建物を見て作ってあの東京用に東京で展示するから東京用になんかあのもっと街にしたいって大きくしたいと思ってやって。<laughs> so, this installation、um, was originally in Sapporo, and the blue buildings are actually、uh, buildings that are in, well, I think, one particular building that is in Sapporo that's been produced. But when he showed this work in Tokyo,、um, he added the grey buildings to it, which、uh, are buildings from Tokyo, and made it you know, even larger、mm -hmm. scale. The, I don't know, I don't know, たときには、えっと、できれば上海の町で、あのー、まあ今のところはですけど、なんかこうこのテーマであのー、作ってみたいなっていうのが一つあって、まあもしかしたら行ったときには全然違うことやりたくなっちゃうかもしれないですけど。So he's he's going to do an exhibition in Shanghai, so he's thinking of you know adapting this further by by adding Shanghai buildings to it, but. That's just his idea at the moment, and when he gets to Shanghai, he might find he wants to do something that's totally different.、Mm. That's what he's thinking about.、Mm. <clears throat> like I said when I, I, I started my comments, you are incredibly brave and honest in your revealing of how、um, certain life experiences、um, have impacted on your own feelings and how that's then been translated into art.、Um, and I was just wondering. What would happen if you then, if the work then became more, not explicitly about you, but if you actually featured more directly within the work? So it wasn't, I know we, I've spoken about this ventriloquial metaphor.、Um, to, I'm just going to read this from um, this um, exhibition called With Hidden Noise. Um, sculpture, video, and ventriloquism that talks about this relationship between the dummy and the ventriloquist. It's two voices, two separate personalities, but issued from the same body. In Nietzsche, the artist allows certain forces, which he designates as will, to move and speak through him. This is a strategy for, construct, for the construction of virtual possible selves. A ventriloquial or ventrilo. Ventriloquial、uh, relationship is the link between self and world, a link that problematizes the source of artist origin while it blurs our connection with things. So, on the one hand, what I find so intriguing about your work is this use of other objects, of other people,、um, to speak back to yourself. So, actually, the work is incredibly self reflexive. But would it be, so this is my final question, would it be too uncomfortable for you? To have you、um, representing yourself in a far more explicit or more direct way, even though this ventriloquial metaphor is actually really interesting in terms of your work, would it just be too uncomfortable to have to deal with you being, you being more, it being more obviously you within the work? <laughs> あの基本的に人の肖像画を使って買っているんですね。あの彼はあのベンチュリプリの話をしたいんですけれども、ベンチュリプリは。日本のジャパニーズ。あの要するに人形を使って、その人形が話しているような、あのコメントですよね。あのそのように要するに違う人を使っているわけですね。その肖像画の中で。えー、で、あのそれはそれなりに面白くて。彼はなんか他の展覧会の説明をちょっと、えー、そこでしていたんですけれどもあの要するに同じ人間同じ体から2つの声そして2つの性格が出るのがこういう勉強部分なんだけれども、えー、っとただあの自分要するに他の人の,その肖像画を使うんじゃなくて自,自分をもっと直接に入れればどうなりますかねそれはあんまりにもなんか不安な感じになりますか
、それによってこの作品がもっと強くなると思いますかうん最近の,その一番最近の作品というか展覧会の時に、まあ、ちょっと直接的に自画像ですとはいう感覚ではないんですけど少しまあ自分最終的に自分を描いたなって思う作品を描いたんですけどなんかもうそれはもう顔を描けないんですよねもう顔ぐちゃぐちゃになってるんですけどうんとなんかそういう作品になっちゃうんですよねで見返していくと結局でもほとんどの作品にはなんか自分っぽさというか自分の性格っていうのは入ってるなっていうのは自分で分かっているのでまあ、でも自分を書くってやんないやんないと思います。<笑> so, I mean, in some of his recent exhibitions, the work he's been doing, he wouldn't say he's been doing self-portraits, but he's done, as it were, portraits in which after he's finished them, he's thought there's quite a bit of himself、mm. in there.、Mm. Um, but he, he never does the face. You know, the face、mm. is always a mess, so that you can't、mm. see、mm. the face.、Um, so in that sense, he thinks that he is. Reflecting himself in、mm, his work. That's what's very interesting.、Right? But he、mm. thinks it would be going too far to actually do self portraits and、mm. start with the intention of depicting、mm. himself. That's something he doesn't, I don't think he doesn't want to go in.、Mm. Okay. Yeah. That's, all, that's all of my questions and comments. Okay. So you did have a bit.